idea students. Today I will talk about offer curves. It's uh, one of the main um, topic of the uh, World Economic Course. Let's start. Uh, as you can see here, we have three main learning targets. The first one is the uh, general definition of the partial and general equilibrium analysis. Uh, here we need to define, to understand what's the main difference between the partial equilibrium analysis and general equilibrium analysis. The second target is about international equilibrium price ratio and we will, def we will use mainly traditional economic tools such as demand and supply curve to define uh, international equilibrium uh, price. And the last one is about OFA curve and we will use and uh, we will approach from the general equilibrium perspective to define international equilibrium price ratio. Okay, and let's start from the uh, part from the uh, definition. Uh, and as you can see, uh, partial equilibrium and general equilibrium analysis are mainly used to define international price ratio. Okay, international price ratio. As you can see here, we have two methods, partial equilibrium and general equilibrium. Let's start from the partial equilibrium. As you can see, the firstly, we need to understand that if we want to uh, define international price ratio uh, from the partial equilibrium uh, perspective, uh, we need to take only one industry. Okay, we uh, have only one industry and we mainly use supply and demand curve, some uh, traditional uh, economic tools, supply and demand curve, and with this way we can uh, find international price uh, ratio and and the main target is to keep trade balanced. Okay, it's our first priority for the partial equilibrium analysis at the same time for the general equilibrium analysis. Okay, and the second target, the second one is general equilibrium analysis and general equilibrium analysis is more uh, comprehensive than partial equilibrium analysis because uh, general equilibrium analysis considers all industry. In that case, we just or with this way we can define into industrial effects, okay? For partial equilibrium analysis, it's not possible. But general equilibrium analysis, with a general equilibrium analysis, it's really easy uh, to define into industrial effect, okay? And here we mainly use OFA curves, okay? As you can see, the OFA curves is our main tool, and intersection of these OFA curves will give us international price uh, equilibrium, okay? And as I said, uh, the main target of the partial and general equilibrium analysis to define equilibrium relative commodity price. Okay, it's our uh, first target. And let's start from the partial equilibrium analysis. Uh, to understand this, um, to understand partial equilibrium analysis, we mainly need this three panel. Okay, it uh, looks a little bit uh, difficult, but it's really easy. Uh, as you can see here, we have two nations, nation one and nation two. The left one indicates the uh, uh, supply and demand curve for nation one, and the right one, the right panel indicates for nation two. As you can see, the uh, equilibrium price in nation one equals uh, P sub one, okay? But for nation two, it's a panel C, the in, uh, equilibrium price is just equals P three, okay? From the comparative uh, advantage perspective, uh, we already know that uh, the nation one has comparative advantage in international market. Therefore, the nation one will export this commodity, commodity X, and nation two will import this commodity. And if we um, start from the explanation of these panels, as you can see, all vertical lines uh, just indicate the uh, relative price of commodity X. As you can see, PX divided by P1 is just relative price of commodity X. And uh, horizontal axis indicates the quantity of X, okay? It's just partial equilibrium analysis, therefore we have only one commodity, commodity X, okay? And we have a uh, middle panel, middle panel indicates international trade case, uh, international trade, let's say, and we have supply and demand curve, okay? One, uh, this point, let's say uh, uh, point A star is critical. Uh, why? Because at this point, it's uh, P1, okay, relative price equals P1 at this point. At this point, this country, nation one, will export nothing, okay, because at this price level, it's already the quantity of, um, let's say, uh, good just demanded by a country, let's say by public, equals the supply, okay. Therefore, at this price level, this country will export nothing, okay. When the price level is above P sub one, this country will start to supply, 
As you can see, our, our level is just equal the same. Okay? For, when, as I said, when the price level is above P sub 1, this country will start to supply this commodity to international market. Okay? As I said, the middle panel is just for international trade, for international market. Okay? At the same time, when the price level is less than P sub 3, Okay, we have just equilibrium point, point on panel C is just a apostrophe. When a price level is less than P sub 3, this country will start to demand. Okay, therefore the starting point of demand curve is P double apostrophe. Okay, it's the same level as a apostrophe. Okay, and as I said, the P sub 1 is just starting point for international trade when this nation 1 will start to supply will start to export this commodity, okay? And, yeah. And when we want to define international equilibrium price, we need to take the intersection point of these two curves, okay? Uh, supply curve and demand curve. This uh, intersection point, A star, will give us international equilibrium price, okay? Why it's an uh, equilibrium price? Because at this point, at this price level, when our price equals P uh, sub 2, at this price level, the quantity of export will be equal to the quantity of imports, okay? This country, just nation one, mm, agreed to export this amount of product to nation uh, two, and nation two um, is ready to accept this amount of product from nation one. Therefore, it's an international equilibrium price, okay? And it's our first target, okay? It's an uh, explanation of the first target. Okay, second target is mainly about offer curve, okay? Just with simple words, offer curve indicates the quantity of export and quantity of imports at each relative price, okay? It's a simple definition of offer curve, and now I will start to explain this complex, uh, uh, let's say, concept, okay? And for the explanation of the offer curve, we mainly need to, um, let's say, curves, uh, the first one is the production possibility frontier, okay? By the way, it's an uh, offer curve for nation one. It's a, it will be the same concept for nation two also, okay? And uh, for the starting point, we need to start from left panel, okay? Because right panel is our result, because it's our offer curve, okay? Let's start from the left panel. As you can see, uh, we have two curves, the production possibility frontier and offer curve, okay? We have two offer curves. And production possibility frontier indicates that this combination of different um, bundles which country is able to produce and all these points uh, is efficient for this country and attainable. And from point A, point A is just um, no trade case, okay? It's auto case. It means that at this point, this country will not export or import, okay? And at this point, we know that the relative price equals um, 125, uh, 0, uh, 0.25, okay? If this country starts to export commodity X to nation two, okay, to nation two, firstly, this country will move from point A to point F, okay? At this point, at this point, our relative price is just equal 0 0.5, okay? 0 0.5 indicates the opportunity cost of commodity X, okay? 0 0.5 means that 1X equals 0 0.5Y, okay? And in that case, if this country, if nation one, okay, exports, exports 40 units of X to nation two, just 95 minus 40 equals 55, yes? It will reach at this point. When our real price equals 0 0.5, it means that if this country exports uh, 40 units of X to nation two, this country will import 20 units of Y from nation two. Okay, because our relative price equals 0 0.5. Now, we have uh, one triangle, okay, HGF. If this country decided to expand its production, to, uh, decided to uh, export more goods, uh, more commodity X to nation two, this country will move from point A to point B. At point B, this country will produce 130 uh, X, as you can see from this panel, and 20y, yes, and 20y. If at this point our relative price equals one, okay, by the way, if we want to find the relative price of commodity X at this point, 
we need to draw our tangent line. Okay, with this way we can find the relative price of commodity X. When our relative price equals one, it means that this country will export sixty units of X. Okay, sixty units of X to nation two, and our relative price equals one. It means that this country will import sixty units of Y from nation two. Therefore, just twenty plus sixty equals eighty. It's our new consumption point, it's this point E, it's our new consumption point for nation one. Okay, now it's a critical part to shift all this data to right panel, okay? To right panel to, uh, to draw our offer curve for nation one, okay? It's, uh, as I said, it's a critical part and it's vitally important to find, to understand this part, okay? Let's start from no trade case, from point A. Okay, at point A, we said that our relative price equals 0.25, okay, as you can see. And if you draw this line, the slope of this line on this panel, you can see that it's below this off curve because at this point, we have no export and no import, okay. Now, second relative price, 0.5, okay. 0.5, we said that when our price equals 0.5, when our relative price equals 0.5, in that case, this country will export, will export just 95 minus 40 equals 55. Will ex export 40 units of X, 40 units of X to nation two. If this country exports 40 units of X to nation two, this country will import 20 units of Y, okay? 20 units of Y, okay? It's just uh, the starting point of this uh, concept of this offer curve, okay? Now, if our relative price equals one, Okay, our, if our real price equals one, in that case, this country will export 60 units of X to nation two, and this country, in that case, will import 60 units of Y from nation two, because our real price equals one, okay, our real price equals one, and now, if we merge all these points, we can get this line, okay? This line indicates the offer curve for nation one, okay, for nation one, and you, you need to uh, understand that when our real price equals um, 0 0.25, it means that 1x equals 0.25y. When our real price equals 0 0.5, it means that 1x uh, equals 0.5y, okay? And it's just opportunity cost of commodity x, okay? And now, now we can apply the same approach for nation two, okay? If we uh, let's say, impose, let's say, same concept for nation two, we will get the same curve, but it will be opposite direction for uh, the nation one, okay? And I will not repeat this part because I guess it's really clear for you, and it's the same curve, okay? But in that case, we will approach from the opposite perspective, when our real price equals one, two, or four. Obviously, the uh, this slope of these lines will be higher than previous graph, okay? Now, we need to uh, get uh, the result. Uh, we need to explain general equilibrium analysis, okay? For the general equilibrium analysis, mainly we need to use the previous two of a curves, previous two of a curves, and with this way, we can define international equilibrium relative price, okay? International equilibrium relative price. And our target is to keep trade balance, okay? It's our uh, uh, first priority, it's our main target, okay? We need to keep trade balance. And now uh, we have this panel, and it's just bigger version of this previous two panels, okay? And we, uh, on this panel, we merged these two curves, okay? This blue line, just blue curve, indicates of a curve for nation one, and this line, indicates uh, this let's say curve indicates the off a curve for nation two okay and the intersection point of these two curves as you can see the intersection point of these two curves will give us international equilibrium relative price okay and as you can see from this panel p sub b uh, equals p uh, sub b uh, apostrophe and equals uh, one because the, the slope of this line is one okay and yeah, and it means that uh, one x equals one y on, on this line. Okay, it's just 45 degree. Okay, and when our relative price equals one, it means that nation one will export 
60 units of X to nation two, and will import 60 units of Y from nation two. At the same time, nation two will export 60 units of Y to nation one and will import 60 units of X from nation two. Okay. And it's a balanced trade. As you can see, the, content, the nation one is ready to export 60 units of X and to import 60 units of Y. Uh, and at the same time, nation two is also uh, agree with this transaction. Okay, it means that we have balanced trade. And if you want to find to, define, to find why 0.5, for example, is not equilibrium price because when uh, we take 0.5 as equilibrium price at this price level, this nation to nation one, okay, nation one will export 40 unit of X, okay, 40 unit of X, but nation two is ready to accept more than this amount because if we let's say draw this line, okay, and intersect with the uh, curve of nation two, we will guess that the quantity of uh, good which nation two uh, just wants to import is above 40, uh, 100 units, okay? It's just imbalanced trade. Therefore, we need to take only intersection point, okay? Only intersection point. And yeah, and let's, we said that um, general equilibrium analysis just considers all industries at the same time. It means that it's more comprehensive than uh, partial equilibrium analysis. And it's more um, complicated analysis, this general equilibrium analysis. Just let's summarize all this concept. We said that if you want to find international equilibrium price, we have two ways, partial equilibrium analysis and general equilibrium analysis. Partial equilibrium analysis just considers only one industry, but general equilibrium analysis considers more than one industry. Let's say in our example, we just took two industries, uh, the production of commodity X and the production of commodity Y. And for the partial equilibrium analysis, we just used uh, simple supply and demand model to define international equilibrium price. But for the general equilibrium analysis, we just took, um, uh, let's say, off a curve. And with this way, we just took the intersection of this uh, two off a curves. And with this way, we just um, uh, is able uh, to find the equilibrium price, international equilibrium price. And in all explanation, as I said, we uh, keep our trade, international trade balanced. And as I said, it's a key um, target for all this um, analysis, economic analysis. Okay, thank you so much for your attention.